what's good guys welcome back to the channel so this one is coming from kenneth okonkwo and it's going directly to peter obi for a second i would say i really don't know if kenneth okonkwo has a different agenda or a different reason why he's actually angry at peter obi or it's about the failure of the 2023 election that he's still angry about because at the point he supported and he saw everything that happened and even after the election he was still with peter obi and the labor party uh, but all of a sudden he just bolted out and he's been saying a lot on the media in fact this one is actually challenging you know like challenging peter obi that he do, he's not playing politics as he should be i will not say too much i will just allow you guys to watch this video and in the comment section i want you guys to give your opinion about the kind of politics Kenneth Okonkwo wants and the kind of politics H. E. Peter Obi is playing. Enjoy the video, guys. Leadership is a common case. No. Esther say, if I perish, I perish. Whenever you are in leadership, look at what happened to Donald Trump. In America, where security is everywhere. Yet, two times now, they wanted to Every profession has its own risk. If you're not willing to take the risk that is attached to any profession, step aside so that people who are given that mind by god will go ahead and serve god in that capacity if you're an actor and an actress and you say you're not going to hug babes and you're not going to kiss them step aside <laughs> because that's that's what the job is don't come and say you're a born again christian <laughs> that's what the job entails for a politician and you can't stand for your people that voted for you and because you don't want to die step aside because that's what the job entails any politician that is not behaving like simfubara who resist and protest when his rights are trampled upon knowing that our judicial system knowing that our electoral system have failed us that any politician who will not stand his ground no matter the risk to his person i said i will not speak for that politician again and i maintain it and you can see what is happening because we can't go forward we calm down if simfubara has been saying calm down calm down do you know where river state would have been he said he's ready for them he's fully prepared the election must go on the election must hold we last must be declared they will be sworn in and whatever is going to happen let it happen i am looking for leaders who would say nobody will rig my election and if you rig my election i will fight nigerians come out and fight if they kill anybody let them kill all of us oh yes and thank god i'm seeing it happen what fubara did was he advocating for violence was he advocating that the law should be broken? No. He was advocating for his rights. That's my opinion. That's my advocacy. We must advocate for our right and stand by it. I did not disqualify anybody. I don't have that right. I said I am not going to speak for anybody going forward except this person meets this criteria. In any case, we have finished 2023 election. It's over. 2027 election has not come so anybody who is saying betrayer betrayer what am i betraying there is nothing on ground when i was a spokesman in 2023 i did my job creditably well and we convinced nigerians on what we believe is right but you can see that in nigeria you not only have to have the power to win election you have to have the power to defend your election so anybody that does not have that spirit or power to defend the votes in a manner that you would say whatever happens to me as a person let it happen i am not willing to speak any further for the person so what i just simply said is that going forward i will no longer be part of this until these fears are addressed so i did not disqualify anybody one i don't have that power then two i am not betraying anybody because i'm still a member of labor party and you can see i'm still fighting the Labour Party should be consolidated because Nigerians are looking for an alternative to these people. 
that if you want to fight these people who are compulsive thieves and who are the worst amongst us, leading us, according to Sidetan Dume, who is part of them, then you have to grow higher and be more aggressive than calm down. That's what I said, and I stand by it. In all honesty, I would have said we don't. But because I'm a student of theology, I would not say so. Because when Elijah thought he was the only person that was worshipping God, God said, no, you're not the only person. There are more than 7,000 persons like you still in that country that have not done anything evil. I know them. So the only thing we have to do in this country, we must not be sentimentally attached to anybody, any politician. We must not be loyal to political parties or politicians. We have to be loyal to the country and to the law. And if any law is, if any law is unjust, we have to fight the law. If anybody is doing anything illegal, no matter who the person is, we have to fight the person. So in Nigeria, we must create the environment so that those 7,000 that we do not know who are leaders will be able to begin to emerge. If the good ones keep quiet, they will never emerge. When people say people are selling their votes, you know why they are selling their votes? Because they believe that even if they vote their conscience, it will not count. Not because they want to be corrupt. They saw what happened in 2023. I was an active participant in that election of 2023. They did not sell their votes. But after, it did not count. So they'll be like, why would I go and say I'm voting for my conscience? When it will not count. If I'm going to take this money, at least it will be what I gain. So if we don't fight. So basically, for me, I think everything Kenneth Okonko says here is making sense. But the bitterness in his eyes, you know, bringing Bible reference and all of that into the story is, is a fact. Because trust me, the kingdom of uh, God, what's it called, so very violent and only the violent to get it by force. But uh, for me, on Peter B's side, I believe he's trying to create a very massive point by sh letting Nigerians know that there is another way to make this thing right or to get this thing done in the right way without violence, without people uh, shedding blood, without bribing or corruption involved. Because if you look at what Kenneth Okunko is saying, he's actually saying that, okay, if we must do this, we have to be even, if, if it means us being corrupt, let's be corrupt. Do you understand? If you listen to some of the things he's saying, it means us being corrupt, since they don't want the process to be get, getting, to be handled right, let's be corrupt, and at the end of the day, get what we want. Anyway, you guys listen to everything, and judging from two, two parties, both Kenneth Okunko party and Peter Obi, but somehow, a lot of people always want to support Peter Obi because he has been into politics. He has become a two-term governor of Anambra State, one of the biggest states in the southeast, and he knows more about his politics. He has businesses, he has friends who are politicians. So I believe Kenneth Okonkwo should listen more to um, um, Peter Obi. That's my own opinion, if he really sees him as a godfather. Anyway, thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. Oh.